on a great cast today so far. I'm here with Cyrene to break down uh, one of the big team fights from Cloud9. It felt like kind of one of the turning points they finally started to do well. Uh, Dragon Fight, 33 minutes in. Uh, a very poke based composition versus TSM wanting to team fight at short of short range without any ways of forcing an engagement. Yeah, and this was an incarnation had his Luden's Echo completed. We're going to pull that up here on the teleprompt, telestrator, and draw on it a little bit here. So, <laughs> when this fight started, Jat had called out that right before this, Cloud9 used three crucial team fight ultimates. Yep. Thing is, the most crucial pre fight ultimate is Kogma. His Kogma just by Arcane Barrage, the fact that he's throwing down the Living Artillery as well, is absolutely huge in this fight. He's going to poke Bjergsen out of it before they can even start it. And let's start rolling the clip here, because despite not having the ultimates, they're still able to get this poke damage down onto Bjergsen. He's taking these chunks. They're just zoning the front line. They get the dragon. Dyrus goes in. The barrel separates. They get Dyrus out of the fight. And then they have no front line left. And right here, pause it right here. Look at this beautiful line here. It's amazing. This is absolutely gorgeous from Cloud9 because Bjergsen is right up here. Yep. He can't do anything in this fight. He still has his flash available, but he'd have to flash this wall and ulti right there. Then everybody turns on him and his team is not in position to back him up. This is just a great, great, great positioning here from Cloud9 in that line. Incarnation filing in the back yeah. over Scuttle Crab too. So that's not going to give Bjergsen a speed boost to even get out. It's not going to give TSM a speed boost to get back in. It's going to give Cloud9 all the footing they need in this team fight. And that's really just the poke before, the barrel from Meteos, and the positioning during the fight was what made this for Cloud9 and got yeah. them back in the game. And it's just impressive as well, just on a coordination standpoint, that literally all five guys are on the same page, whether that's all their intuitive skill sets to realize that Bjergsen went there, or Meteos, who we assume is a shot caller, is like, hey, everyone go on the bottom side near Dragon and gets the sentence out in time to say hide from Bjergsen. Either way, it's impressive by C9. And yeah, they clean up. You still got the threat of Bjergsen on the back line, and yet he never gets to ult, he never flashes in, he never does anything, despite being the most fed member on the map. I think there's still a bit left of this clip, so we can continue yeah. rolling it and see how the rest of the team fight goes out. Because Bjergsen, he just can't get back into this fight. Incarnation is just poking and poking. He throws off to the left, to the right. They pick up Wild Turtle, and then they go up after Lust Boy and clean up that fight. The fact that they're able to get Dyrus out of the fight very quickly and get the threat of the mid-range made of Bjergsen out yeah. just made it so that C9 could just walk all over them after that point. Yep, Incarnation by himself zoned up Bjergsen for the last half of that fight. The, the start of the fight somehow worked despite missing a lot of ultimates. Yeah. Good fight for C9. Hey, you just need that pre-fight ultimate. Yeah, all right. Well, of course, a very good fight by C9 overall. We're going to throw it over to the desk for an interview. Well, thank you, gentlemen. As you mentioned, a fantastic way to start off the split there. Very exciting game between the two teams I have here on the desk with me, Incarnation and Meteos from the victorious Cloud9. So first off, congratulations, but I'm coming to you immediately, Incarnation. First big game on the land stage here in the North American LCS. You have to go up against the defending champions from the spring split, as well as the MVP in the mid lane, Bjergsen. What was the pressure and the nerves and, you know, what was the mindset going into this game one? Uh, I was a bit nervous when we started and then they really focused mid as well. So it made me like, I don't know, I got extremely nervous and I felt really far behind and Bjergsen played the matchup very well. So, But it seemed tough. like you guys had the right... Uh, idea in that, okay, we have this late game scale in Kogma, it's okay as long as we can continue to stall the game out. And so in that sense, you had this incredible support system behind you in Meteos, Balls, Lemonation, and Sneaky, where it was a lot about a rotational game, not picking fights, just waiting for you to power up. How has that been moving into this team setting as a solo queue player where you have the ability to say, I'm not doing very well right now, guys. Let's you know, take a step back and wait till I power up? Um, it's very different. Usually, I always had the mentality that I had to get ahead to win the game, but my team is playing really well, so I don't necessarily have to take risk or win my lane to win the game, so it's going really good. And Medios, now over to you. One of the big questions going into today was how the team would cope with the loss of the shot caller in high. Uh, you know, we listened into some of the comms during the game. Everything seemed very calm between you guys, even in, you know, a bit of that deficit that was growing early. Very calm, cool, collected, and a, and a lot of communication between the players. So how do you feel the communication, the shot calling has grown and evolved with the team so far? I think that our communication as a team is still pretty good in the sense that 
we all get along really well, so it's pretty easy to just do calls. But I will say that I don't think I'm highest level of shot calling at all. He was extremely good, especially when we would get behind because when High was there leading us, it never really felt pressured when we were behind. It's just sort of we all know what to do. And so taking on that responsibility, I was feeling a bit confused when we were getting behind, and it feels bad when we're getting pressured. But we just tried to stay calm, realize that Kogma scales. And so we managed to win, but I don't think it was our cleanest game ever. We still have a lot of work to do in that department, but it's getting there. Now, you know, when it comes to work that you have to do, we heard uh, Sneaky mention in a feature we showed earlier that uh, the belief is that bringing Incarnation in, if everything is done properly, you guys can become a much stronger team than you were before. What are the steps that you guys are actively taking to improve from where you're at now here in Game 1, which was a very solid performance unseating uh, the defending champions, to where you hope to be come the end of the split? I think that it's just going to take a lot of games to get to where we need to go. I don't know if there's specific problems, but in scrims, we're just running into issues where we're faced with a situation we haven't seen before. And so we have to basically figure out what to do in that situation. And when I'm shot calling, it's kind of my responsibility to do that. And then we all have to get on the same page for it. So a lot of times, there'll be some hesitation with what we're doing. And I think that's really bad from a competitive standpoint. Anytime you hesitate, it's basically just a mistake. You're not doing anything. So we've been working towards just everyone go for something, even if it's not necessarily the right play. If it's not right, we can look at the replay, learn what the right thing to do is, and then go for that. Basically, it's just getting on the same page and then figuring out what we're actually supposed to be doing. So we're getting there slowly. It's not something that you can learn overnight, but that's definitely what we're trying to do. Now, Incarnation, you also mentioned in the feature that we uh, talked about that you aren't necessarily going to try and fill High's role for what he did because you are your own player. So in your own words, what is kind of the, the mark of your play style? What, at the end of the day, are you going to be remembered for in this league as a mid laner? I mean, I personally prefer playing aggressive, but now that it's on stage as well, it's a bit different because at least today I was not really feeling like it. I was a bit nervous as well, and the matchup wasn't the best for it. So it's hard, but personally, yeah, I prefer being the aggressive player. All right, well, ultimately, you guys started off very strong. As I mentioned, unseating number one, you have Dignitas tomorrow, Medios, but you know, more than just that match, I want to kind of uh, source your opinion on how you think today's performance reflects uh, Cloud9's strength currently. You mentioned it's not your cleanest showing ever, but do you feel that it was a pretty accurate showing as to where you are right now? I think it sort of showed how we were. Not so much the win or loss, because that game was extremely close. I had a really bad engage at Dragon that almost lost us the game, but Balls saved it with a really nice rumble alt. So it was one of those games that was super close, and we could have won or lost it basically any fight. And so that's kind of where we are. I'd say we're not to the point where we're having dominating performances or anything like that like we have in the past, but we're not going to just like fall over every game. So I think we're doing all right right now. All right, well, again, congratulations on the victory, starting the split off strong. The game did not fail to excite fans at home, I'm sure, or us here at the desk. Now, don't go anywhere. When we return, Team Dragon Knights make their LCS debut when they face off against Team Liquid. We'll be right back after this. You know why Yasuo never gets locked Whoa. out of his apartment? Uh, stop. You're going to put the team on tilt. Stop it. Because he always has a key. Because there's no lock. Because his friends are always home. <laughs> okay. And they are right on to Incarnation. They let him run through the lane, and then they actually flank Cloud9 on their own initiation. Yeah, I can flash on Ergot. Uh. Victor's going on the side. Ergot, Ergot, Ergot. Yo, can we get the rush? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can we get the rush? I have ult still, I have ult still. Yeah. No Gregor's ult? No Gregor's ult? Greg. Kill him, kill him, kill him, kill him. Nice. Look, Sivir. Sivir, 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 Sivir. I'm running around. I'm running around. Nice. I'm getting the wrap around here. That Ludens hit coming out as well. They're going to wipe down Team Solo Mid here. Bjergsen very low, can only do a few things from the outside. And Cloud9 pick up the first win of the summer split over Team Solo Mid.